Hello everybody, my name is Asher Leader, and today I'm going to be making a prediction tier list for Season 16 of Apex Legends. Um, this video isn't really going to be edited, it's just not scripted, it's just going to be me kind of talking about my thoughts about how the Legends are going to be basically in the meta next season. So that's going to be including all of the buffs and nerfs that have been confirmed in the patch notes, as well as the new class rework. So, whenever I go over Legend, who has had some sort of change to them, I will mention what that change is before placing them and whether or not I think it'll be a positive or a negative effect for them. Um, as well, the, for those who haven't seen, all the classes are getting V-Work next season, they're all different passives. Uh, I'll go over those quickly now. Uh, the damage passive, or the damage legends, uh, now have the passive of they can hold more ammo uh, in stacks, as well as being able to open up extra compartments on new Red Lupins, similar to Lifeline's old ability. Um, there's these skirmisher classes, which can like look inside of care packages before and after they land. Uh, there are also the recon legends the same. Now, whenever they scan a survey beacon, instead of seeing the next ring, they'll be able to see all enemies on the map, I believe. And then there's control, which basically get the old recon passive, except it's a new like scanning device instead of the survey beacons. And then finally, there's support who can open the blue compart like the compartments on the blue supply bins like lifeline and they also can craft teammates banners after they've expired so that's a huge buff for supports uh anyways we're gonna start with the video so first is ash and right now ash is maybe a b tier but i think the so she's an assault legend i believe now or she still is but the extra ammo and the ability to open up Red, basically to get better red, uh, loop bins to be able to get better attachments is very useful. I think it's one of the better of the new passive abilities, just to be able to hold more ammo. So I'm going to move her up to A tier. I think that her tactical is really lacking compared to the rest of her kit. I think her ultimate's super good for entering fights, not as good for exiting because you're really easy to follow. But she's really good at starting fights, she's really good at finding fights. I think that's what she excels at, and being able to hold more ammo and get attachments much quicker is definitely going to help benefit her playstyle. Next is Bangalore. Uh, I'd say Bangalore's a B tier character. I think she's also getting, she's also staying as an assault class, so she's getting the same buffs as Ash in terms of the new passive. I think that's definitely a, a net positive for her. Of course, it is its new passive, but overall, I think that her kit is solid. I just don't think it can truly. It, she's outclassed by a lot of characters. I think that's the way, best way of putting it. Her ultimate doesn't really do that much compared to some other ultimates. Her uh, tactical smoke can honestly be used against you very easily if you don't have a digi threat or a scam legend. And her passive is actually probably the best part of her kit. It's super strong. You're able to get a lot of movement speed quickly, which is something very important in Apex. Um, next up is Bloodhound. Now, Bloodhound's getting a pretty big rework next season. He's going to have these like white ravens that'll spawn next to him when there are enemies nearby. And he, he can interact with them to basically to have them guide him to the nearest enemy. Um, as well as that her, his ultimate's getting a little bit nerfed, where it will no longer recharge the cooldown of your tactical, and his tactical's scan only lasts for one second instead of three. Overall, I think Bloodhound's A tier, or maybe S tier. We're gonna put him in S tier for now, just cause Seer got a lot of nerfs, which we'll get to later. But overall, I think he's an S tier character, and he's very strong. He's getting the new Vcon passive, being able to find enemies on the map. That's super strong, one of the better ones. Um, but overall, I think he's S or maybe A tier character, somewhere in that area. Next up is Caustix. He's a control, so he can now see the rings before they come using the, uh, not the survey beacons, but like the new things, I forget what they're called. Um, other than that, he does not have any other changes. I think he's definitely a strong legend. I think he's pretty similar to a lot of the other control legends in terms of how they're being, like, for not forced to be played, how they kind of want to be played. We're kind of controlling doors, controlling in sort of spaces. And at that, I do not think he's the best. He's very strong in it, but I think there's some characters who are just better than him. I'm going to put him in B tier above Bangalore. I think he can maybe move to an A tier, depending on how other characters play out. Uh, just, uh, another thing to say, this is a prediction tier list. I might be wrong about a lot of thing, these things. This is just my ideas on like the new buffs and nerfs, how they might affect the meta. But I think Cossack's definitely B tier. I feel like if the other control legends aren't strong, as or aren't as strong as I think they might be, he probably could move up to A tier, but right now I'm gonna put it as a B tier. Uh, next up is Crypto. Crypto didn't get any changes besides the new Vcon passive, I don't believe. He got a couple bug fixes, but I'm really gonna counting that. Um, overall, I think he's kind of a sleeper pick right now, I'm gonna be honest. I think his ultimate, destroying a lot of things, is super powerful. Um, I don't think he was played a lot last season because of how powerful Seer was, 
and since you basically did the same thing as he, he did, uh, he just didn't really play that much. I think that a lot of people are playing him wrong, where they're kind of camping with his drone, instead of using his drone as a basically way to see around corners and that kind of thing. I'm going to put him in B tier above Bangalore as well, but below Caustic. I think definitely he's, there's a lot of room to improve with him in the meta. Actually, that didn't phrase that well. I think definitely the meta can include him in it if other characters are played well, but I do not think he will define the meta as a character like Bloodhound might. Next up is Fuse. Fuse actually got a huge buff with the new passive. Um, that the being able to hold extra ammo really helps his kit because he's now able to camp down with a, maybe a control legend and hold a bunch of grenades, a bunch of ammo, and really never run out of that. His ultimate is still really weak. His, attack, his knuckle cluster is still crazy. Actually, his ultimate is not that weak. It's it's just really easy to kind of get out of it. But his knuckle cluster is still really good. His passive, like I just said, is really going to combo well with that extra ammo. And also, the being able to get attachments much faster is very useful. I'm going to put him in above Caustic on B tier. I think that fit, fits well. Gibraltar. Gibraltar is now a support legend. So he gets the ability to craft banners and can open up blue lupins. That is huge. Him being able to craft uh, banners is a huge change. That is very worthwhile. Because now you can you can run him instead of somebody like Newcastle or Lifeline. Well, not really Newcastle because he's also a support now. But him having that is a huge change. He was already pretty strong. I'm going to put him in A tier. I feel like he can definitely be an S tier character. But as of right now, I feel like there are a couple characters that kind of fit his playstyle that are stronger. Next up is Horizon. Horizon is getting her recoil, or not recoil, her spread on the gravity lift increased, so it'll be harder to hit shots that way, but you also be going up the gravity lift 10% faster. That is more of a change than a nerf. I do think it is probably a net negative for her, but it's not like a massive nerf since you're also going up faster. I'm gonna put her above Ash below Givian A tier. I think her black hole's still super strong and her passive is still amazing. Now that Stormpoint's back in rotation as well with the gravity cannons, that's gonna be super good. Her tactical isn't as good as it was, so that's what that's why she isn't an S tier, and also because there's a lot of other characters, or not really a lot, but there's some other characters who do stuff kind of similar to her that are also very good. Next up is Lifeline. Lifeline this season would be a D tier, but because of that new support passive, I'm gonna actually move her to B tier. I'm gonna put her above Bangalore yet again. Actually, I'll put her above Crypto as well. Uh, being able to craft teammates' banners is huge. It'll allow you to get teammates back in the fight even after their banners have expired. Uh, also, on top of that, I forgot to mention, Lifeline's, uh, she's now, she gets less slowed when using her passive to, like, revive, so she's not gonna get as slowed as much as she does now when she's going for a revive. Uh, as well as that, her care package is dropping in faster. I think it's about six seconds faster now. And you can also, the distance you can place the care package away from you is being increased, so... Not anything major there besides the passive being, or yeah, her passive being able to, like, or not being, she no longer getting slowed when using her passive, I think is a very big change. Uh, problem is Lifeline is very strong in Avenas, and now that Avenas is getting removed, I don't think she's going to be as strong as she was. This is also for Battle Royale, I will say now. Um, but I think Lifeline is kind of a mix. I think she can be really strong, but I think she should also be really weak. So she's kind of a developer now. Loba. So Loba's passive is solid, I'd say. Her tactical is also solid, and I think her ultimate is fairly good early game. Um, I would say her, she's also still support legend, so she still gets that banner. So I think actually a combo for her might be to get into a fight after your teammates have died, or not get into a fight, but if your teammates have died, get their banner, even, even if you don't get their banner, she's just get out of that fight with her tactical and be able to get the banners then. I'm going to put her in B tier, I'm going to say. Actually, let's put her up high, highest in B tier for now. I think she's definitely could be good, but I definitely think she could also be pretty weak, depending on how Gibby and Newcastle will turn out. Uh, next up is Mad Maggie. I'm gonna put... I'm gonna... So Mad Maggie's an interesting one. I think her ultimate is pretty strong now, now that it can break most things, including Gibby bubbles. So the thing is, if Gibby is good, then Mad Maggie is good. But if Gibby isn't good, then Mad Maggie isn't gonna be as good. Her shotgun passive is still super strong. Also, she is still an Assault Legend. I wanna say that she gets the extra ammo on the better attachments. Her uh, passive is super strong, and it's also getting a somewhat of a buff, not directly to it, but because there's going to be new um, legendary shotgun bolts, which will reload when sliding, similar to Kinetic Feeder. That's a pretty buff, and also the PK and the Mastiff can now take stocks and have tighter spreads. Or, no, but the Mastiff has a tighter spread. But that's going to be a pretty big buff to shotguns in general, which buffs her. I'm going to put her above Horizon in A tier. I know that be, might be kind of a hot take. I think she definitely has the potential to be a very strong character, and I think that if the meta kind of forms around her with Gibby being good, she can be really good. So, just a reminder, this is not, like, what the next season will be. This is my predictions on how the meta might turn out from the current patch notes. 
Uh, Mirage. Mirage got a huge buff. He is now invisible for three seconds after reviving, as well as his teammate who is reviving. Um, and his decoys will now, the like ping that appears on enemies after they shoot a decoy, will now last for an extra second, and it will move with them, so it's much easier to track enemies through wall walls. Um, because of that, I'm actually going to put Mirage below Fuse and B tier. I think because there's now an actual consequence to shooting a decoy, he is much stronger, because beforehand, if you shot a decoy, you waste a couple shots, he knows who you are. But Chains that are, if you're shooting at a decoy, he already is going to know who you are. So you kind of lose, there isn't really, a, wasn't really a consequence to it. But now that there is a consequence, because it moves through walls, it is going to be much more punishing to actually shoot the decoy. Um, on top of that, just another, kind of a nerf to him, his decoys will, or er, enemies will not be pinged if his decoy walks through something like a thermite grenade or a fused knuckle cluster. It's only gunshots and fists that now bamboozle. Uh, Newcastle, S tier. I think Newcastle's kid is super strong. I think he's been a sleeper pick since he was released. His passive is one of the best in the game, being able to revive while moving and defending your uh, teammate. That's huge. His ultimate is great for taking space if your teammate's way too far ahead. And his tactical is also good for taking space as well as defending you while either reviving or healing. I think him also being able to craft banners now is like crazy strong. Because now he's like the ultimate support character. Like He's really outclassing lifeline now. At the, at the start when he was first released, I thought Lifeline could maybe compete with him, but now that this they both have the same uh, class passive, Newcastle is undeniably one of the best characters in the game. He is honestly one of the most slept-on characters. Next up is Octane. Octane is... he is a skirmisher now? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. Um, Horizon, Mirage, and I think that's it right now, are all skirmishers now, so they get the ability to see into care packages. Um... Uh, Octane is also now a skirmisher, I believe, so he's going to get that ability to see the pair packages. Um, I think that that's definitely a positive for him. I think, sorry, sorry, I'm not, I'm kind of out of humor. I think that his jump pad is good. I think he can definitely get in and out of fights with that. I think it's a lot harder to follow than Ash. Um, his stim is still good for getting speed, but his his passive also combos very well with stim. Overall, though, I think he's a B tier character. I'm actually going to move Bangalore down. I don't think she's going to be very good. I think he's a B tier character, probably above Caustic. I think he's kind of over, he's definitely overplayed because he's one of the like he's definitely one of the most fun characters to play. So that's why a lot of people play him. But I don't think he's like that good in meta. But I'm gonna put him B tier for now. Yet again, that can't change. That's just my prediction. Pathfinder. Pathfinder is getting a very big Pathfinder is getting a very big buff. His ultimate now can go sixty percent farther, and you go sixty percent faster on it. Also, it just makes it it's just changed to be a little bit easier to place. That is huge. That it makes it way better for rotating. Since before you just kind of open on it, but now that you're going faster and you can go longer on it, you're able to take space much quicker and from much farther away. Uh, also, his passive is getting changed, but that's just to change since he can no longer scan recon beacons because he's a skirmisher now. It's now when you mark care packages. It's the same passive. It's just that it's the way you activate it is different. I think Pathfinder is an A tier character now. I think beforehand he was maybe a C tier, but now that he has that way better rotation, he's definitely an A tier character for me. Rampart, my main. I would say that Rampart... So Rampart has a controller passive now to be able to see the next uh, zone when she scans a thing. I think that her amped cover is a very strong ability. I think that Sheila is also a very strong ability. She does not have a very good passive. LMGs right now are not very strong. Um, and overall, since her passive is nothing without LMGs, it's just not a very good passive because LMGs aren't very strong. It's kind of the opposite of Mad Maggie, where shotguns are really powerful, so she has a very powerful passive. Same cannot be said for Rampart. I think Rampart is a, probably better than Fuse, or worse than Loba, or at least that's my prediction. I think Sheila, mixed with the amped cover, is super... I think it's the fastest time to kill in the game. I think that's super strong. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of E-tier really quickly. Uh, but I think she definitely has a lot of potential if the legend, if the meta is a lot campier. Revenant. Revenant did not get any changes this season outside of the new Assault passive. I'm going to put him in D tier. I think that he's definitely the worst character in the game right now. Mirage was the worst before him, but now that Mirage actually has buffs to make him a good character, he's now by far the worst character in the game. He doesn't really just have any competition in that regard. His silence is fine, but it, it only really if your enemy doesn't get hit by it, you're just going to be at a disadvantage because you don't really have a tactical outside of it, so your enemy is going to have that tactical if they don't get hit by it. Um, his death totem is can easily screw you over if you use it wrong. It's definitely the... The ability with the most, what was it? Um, high risk, high reward. That's it. Definitely that. And his tactic and his passive is just kind of there. I think it's good against Seer, but other than that, it's not very that good. 
Speaking of which, Seer, he got a bunch of nerfs. His ultimate no longer scans enemies when he throws it down. His ultimate also lasts for a couple seconds shorter, and it is now 60 seconds longer to recharge. That is a huge nerf to his ultimate. Um, as well as that his passive is, hard, is basically slower now, and it's a little bit less precise, I believe. I think that's what it was. And his also much louder, and his, tact, his uh, tactical no longer reveals enemies like bodies. It just shows you where they are. I'm gonna say Seer's now an A-tier character. I think he's below- actually, he's below Maggie, let's say. Because I think Bloodhound's definitely the best scan of the game now. He's just- he got buffs instead of nerfs, which is kind of weird, because a lot of scan characters got nerfed. But, since Seer got these huge nerfs to his ultimate, which is probably- which is one of the best parts of his kit, I think he's definitely a lot weaker. I still think he's gonna be a pretty good character. I definitely think he's still gonna be run in the meta, but I do not think he's gonna be as good as he was. Next up is Valk. I'm gonna put Valk above Gibby. I think that- her tactical is still fine, I think that her ultimate is still very strong, and I think that her passive is still a very good repositioning tool mid-fight. I think that she's definitely gotten a bunch of- she got a bunch of nerfs season 13, I believe. Or not 14, uh, 13, 14, I think. Either 13 or 14. Um, I think she's an 8. She's also a skirmisher as well now, need to mention that. Um, I think she's a strong character, I definitely think she's gonna have a place in the meta, because she got a bunch of nerfs and she was still very powerful in the meta. So I think, I don't think she's going to be S tier, I don't think she's going to be an S tier character, but I still think she's going to be played a lot and is going to be very powerful. Next up is Vantage. I also love playing Vantage as well. Um, her ultimate is very strong. Uh, her tactical is very good for repositioning. And her passive is super good for getting info on enemies before entering fights. That being said, I think she is below Pathfinder and A tier. I think she's kind of a jack of all trades characters right now. A lot of offense, a lot of repositioning, a lot of recon stuff. I don't think she really fits one specific role perfectly, which is what her biggest downfall is, which is kind of a mix of all these different classes, and yet she doesn't really excel at one thing specifically. I think that's what's holding her back. If they maybe got rid of the laser on her ultimate to make it a little bit harder to hit, or maybe a little bit, so basically you wouldn't be able to tell what the advantage was by the ultimate, I think that definitely buffer her, because that'd make her much more of a recon character and have her fit into that one role specifically a lot more, and I think that'd definitely flesh her out more. As of right now, I think she's bottom of A. She could be B2, she could be S tier, I don't know. That's my prediction. Next was Watson. Watson has been played, been played a lot more recently. I think her ultimate is super good. It can block most projectiles in the game. I think her uh, fences are very good. I think that her passive is kind of where she lacks. Ultimate, getting her ult instantly is super good, but the passive shield regen just isn't really there. I'm gonna put her at top of B tier, maybe? Actually, I'm gonna switch her advantage. I'm gonna put advantage at top of B tier. But Watson, bottom of A tier. I think. Watson's definitely a character that has a lot of potential. I don't think she's going to specifically excel in this meta, unless it's like a campy meta, but I think she's definitely going to be a very solid pick, especially in uh, pubs. Wraith. Wraith got a bunch of buffs. Actually, not a bunch. She, her portal got buffed a lot. It, you can go, I believe, twice as far now with it, which is super huge. She now runs faster the longer she's using that portal and like setting it up. Uh, but one small nerf to it is it lasts 45 seconds instead of a minute. Not a huge nerf, because you're going much farther with it, but still, a little bit of a nerf. I think she's going to be an A tier character. I think she's going to be super strong because of that enhanced uh, repositioning and rotating. She's, and I think, going to be the best rotating. Actually, you know what? Let's move her up to a, uh, S tier. I think she's going to be one of the best characters in the game just because of the ability to reposition through that ultimate much farther now. And the fact that um, you're going to gain a lot of speed from that, so it's going to be easier to place down the other portals since you're also going farther now. So I did not explain that very well, but um, let me try to rephrase that. Uh, since this, since you're going farther now to place down the portal, having that extra speed boost is going to be huge because it's going to be it's going to make it so you're not running as long to get to your destination since it's farther away now. I think she's going to have a lot of powerful repositioning and rotating tools, and I think that's going to be essential to the new meta because I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of camping. Finally, there's Catalyst. Catalyst's reinforcement passive is also uh, Wraith is a skirmisher as well now. I should mention that. Um, path, uh, not path, not Pathfinder. Catalyst's her reinforcement passive. I think it's called that. Or where she can reinforce doors is very good, especially in areas with a lot of doors. Duh. Her, I think her ultimate is can be really strong for repositioning if the enemies don't know exactly where you are through it. I think her ultimate, her, her ultimate's definitely a lot weaker uh, in like indoors and stuff, which is where she really excels, which is kind of weird. But I think her spikes are super good. I just wish that um, they did a little, a little bit more damage quicker. I keep mind I also haven't played Catalyst for very long, so I don't really know much about her. But I think her spikes could definitely use a buff. But other than that, I think she's a pretty well-rounded character. I'm gonna put her below Fuse and B tier. Um, actually, we're gonna move Crypto down. Eh. 
move Lifeline down a bit. I think that I think that's a good spot. But that's my cheer list. Those are my predictions for uh, season sixteen. Um, I don't think I'm gonna edit this video. I think I'm just gonna leave it as it is. By the way, this is recorded on the tenth of February, so more news might come out. I doubt it. The patch notes just came out today. I think that's pretty much final. But overall, this is my prediction, and I might make a video after the season to see how close I was. Uh, thanks for watching.